they look like they're mad at each other. All right, let's go get you fixed. Hey guys, welcome back. Today is an exciting day. It's not because we're working on the truck because our parts aren't in yet, but we rented a Bobcat skid steer. I don't know what it's called, but we rented heavy equipment and Martin gets to operate it today. So very, very exciting. So we've been busy people. We got the pool from over here, moved over this general area. We're gonna move the sand up here, which is why we rented the heavy equipment. We're gonna remove that tree because that tree kind of sucks and all that good stuff. Check it out. Ooh, we need to buy one of these, maybe. Always windy. As soon as I pick up the camera, blowing. I'm not gonna wait for it. So you might be wondering why build a pool down here if you're just gonna move it. Well, I originally envisioned having a beautiful deck come off of this ledge. It's gonna be wonderful. Have this big wide deck where you put pool chairs out and all this stuff. But the reality is Martin don't have time to build that. So we're going to put it up by the house and uh, just call it good. Maybe someday, but uh, today is not the day and I'd rather just, we both would rather just have it up by the house um, for now. So that's what we're doing. That's why we're doing it. Um, trial and error, folks. Trial and error. Nothing wrong with that. Here we are, $2,800 later, at 9 o'clock at night, because it's hotter than hell out. Dried ivy? No, it's uh, not that bad right no, now. No, it's gorgeous. It's perfect now, but earlier it's hotter than hell. But I spent my day in a bobcat moving dirt. So, this doesn't look too bad, though. Nice new harness. Hopefully our problems will be solved. Take this mom's thing and go home because it's got a blingy plate, and I get to drive around with that crap on there. What well, says you, kid? Don't draw on that car. It's dirty enough. Uh, people don't need to know we're happy. Okay. No, no, no leave it. No, no. Well, now people are gonna think we're pissed off. No, it looks like he eats oysters. Never mind, just leave it. Let's go. Are they hinting something here? So all this says is that this harness is a service harness and not a production harness. Production harness meaning if the vehicle is specced with anything like fancy different options and there's also stuff that we may not need on this harness and it says to leave the connectors the blind connectors on it just in case so there's no corrosion that happens Sucks. 
It's supposed to be a little bit cooler today, but it's not. It's California. All right, let's climb out of this fancy old rig here and get our harness, and we're gonna lay it out, open the hood, and let's take a look what we're dealing with. Here's our harness laid out next to the truck. That end hooks to the cab somewhere in there. That right there, those square plugs, those plug into the engine ECM. So I do see where they were messing with stuff and hard to see here because I can't really get the camera in there, but there's some wires in there that are pretty roached. Obviously I've been rubbing and touching and they're exposed. And actually you could see like this yellow one there, there's a bunch more. What you can see is you see this sheath, right? You see this, this loom and you see the ridges on it. You see exactly, you see exactly what those ridges do. They're eating away at the wiring. Now, I've never really had that happen on wiring harnesses. And I mean, I've run some old junk, you know, I've had a 1998 Peterbilt original harness. I had a 1988 Peterbilt. Granted, it was mechanical, but there were still wires going, running along the frame rail, and it was a similar deal. It was in a, it was in a plastic loom, just like this. So you'd figure that <laughs> that wouldn't be a problem. But I guess in these newer harnesses, it is. It's just... That's what I've been told about newer trucks, like, especially even the new, new trucks, the wiring is trash in them, and there's so much of it. So here we have a clear example, clear example of the wiring being trash. I had to literally make a custom tool. Now this is a crow's foot on a pry on a. No, this is a pry bar. You see what I had to do? I had to really cut it thin so I could actually get in there. And it's some weird 16 millimeter crap stud. And the problem with it is, is this is a stud. So this is for your ground. This part screws into the block. There's a ground over here. This part, you're supposed to be able to hold with the wrench. So you can spin this out so you can get your ground off. Well, that's not the case because the whole damn stud would spin out and it would break my wires. So I had to make that tool just to be able to get back there at it and get that thing off. All right, so we have our harnesses laid out side by side. I think I'm gonna take a break right now because it's hot. My head's pounding and making custom tools took way too much time, so. My lovely wife has just arrived home from her shopping spree, although she didn't get to buy anything for herself. She still likes running around and shopping. It fills her heart. I know it does. Let's go wash your hands and have a drink. It's not going to be routed like that though. Don't worry. This is our stuff that goes to our starter. Ground from the starter. I think it wants to go down this way. What do you think, Alice? If the starter's on that side, sure. I'll take 
make that a success. High five, Alice. <sighs> Works. Now as long as it doesn't do it anymore on the road, that'd be even better. <laughs> For reals. Well, harness is replaced. We are all wire tied, run along there. One other little thing we have to address real quick. And that's this guy. I'm gonna swap the shock real quick that's on the drive that's leaking. I might have had these on the shelf, so. As you can see, that one is no bueno. But anyway, we're all wire tied out of the way. As you can see, all the way around there, and down there, up there. So harness has been changed. And we're ready to rock. I'm gonna test drive the truck and hopefully our problems are solved because that was a, an annoyance a real annoyance but anyway i'm gonna swap the shock real quick and then we're gonna take the truck for a spin uh, how bad is it leaking it's leaking bad and it's changed aren't they supposed to have some sort of a warranty on and not do that The impact doesn't have as much horsepower as I do. <laughs> I guess not. There's like no, no shock left. <laughs> There's like nothing. It's like playing the trumpet. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Ice maker's broken. I had to buy ice from the store and put it in there. And I think it's out of ice. So that sucks. Uh, Martin's been working on the truck. He's got it going. We're going to go take it for a test drive. Uh, make sure that it's not acting up and hopefully it'll stay that way so he can go back to work. I looked at rates today for work. Absolutely horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. There's like no loads, definitely no loads to the Midwest. Um, the onion loads seem to be gone here. Um, so we don't even have those as an option. I saw one onion load going to New York um, and it only paid like 6,000 bucks. Tell me that's worth it. And uh, everything else is shorter haul and it's barely at $2 a mile. Um, a lot of it was actually like in the 180s a mile. So. Uh, I think there was like 63 loads posted this morning and you know a lot of loads are like um, duplicate postings so in reality I'm gonna say maybe 30 or 40 loads it sucks but let's go take Fancy for a spin and uh, cross her fingers that she's uh, fixed and ready to go to work when we can find work. How bad of a job was it to do to switch out that harness? It didn't seem like it took you too terrible long. Man all in all if you were messing around with the ground like I had to mess with making the custom tool, um, I think you could do it in an hour to an hour and a half yeah. from start to finish. I, I was expecting like literally to take you like a day or more because it just seemed like a, you know, it feels really overwhelming, so, but you got it, got it done pretty quick. I originally thought that it was like the whole shebang, right? The whole chassis harness, like from the front of the bumper to the back to the tail lights, but no, it's... That's a whole different harness, and this is a chassis harness that runs from the ECM to the communications on the truck. And there's a bunch of wires that in this harness that are updated that we didn't use, I think a couple. But other than that, really, it's plug and play. I don't understand why they were trying to charge me $7,000 to do this. When I know, was, I'm, 
when it, it's just in reality the hardest part other than the ground being a pain in the ass is cutting zip ties yeah, like, I, like, I was, like, really, because along with the quote, I was expecting it to be, like, a big job, and, like, you literally just threw that harness up on the engine, and you had it plugged in in no time. If you can change your own oil, you can replace the harness, and it'll save it'll you save a bunch a lot of money. money. Learning experience here that maybe somebody else can use if your truck's doing the code, um, the wires, I think that if we just knew where to look and which harness it was, we would have been able to notice that they were having problems and maybe saved having to take it to Camworth for well, a diagnosis so, anyway. Yeah, probably. Um, but we, we didn't know. We didn't, and I, I didn't know. And the way these harnesses, so they all run in a loom. And what wore the, the harness out was the actual loom that's supposed to protect the wires yeah. from chafing on stuff. And it was the actual loom. And you see it. You see all these little serrated edges on it, like little teeth marks from that loom cutting it and rubbing on it. And it was it. where ours was. It was on the the driver's side of the engine, where it kind of goes yeah, behind. Yeah, it's the... a it's a high stress. So it's a really high stress point area on this guy. And what it is is it kind of so the harness comes in like this, and then it goes down. So that's a big. There's a big Y here, and it, it's really fat here, then thin and it, here, it plugs in and the, it goes down the bottom. Kind of down in there. So all those, yeah, on that Y where it goes up, it's got to make like a 90 degree bend to go down. That's where it shaped. All right, so Fancy Hawk made it to the taco truck, so that's good. We're going to go eat some California tacos, guys. Like the Taco Bell. Oh, man. Messy looking. Best flavor ever. It's not. It is. So Fancy's doing good and I guess we're doing good because when we're having lunch we book the load. Well yeah. you book the load. So. Got a load going to Parlin. Yeah. As much as I, I hate to see this guy go, he, he's got it. Oh my god. We need to make some money back because we've been spending money instead of making it. So he's gonna go uh Get ready, I guess, to go low because he's got to go pick it up here in a couple hours. So really, yeah. really no no warning on this one. Um, I got to use my big boy tarps. Oh, you get to use the big boy tarps? What are you hauling? Some tall ass crates or something. Oh. Alrighty then. Should be interesting. Yes. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up.